this exercise, we'll cover the basics of working with classes in Swift and how classes compare to structures. As I mentioned earlier, classes and structures are very similar. Let's start by reviewing the basics of creating classes in Swift, and then we'll circle back around to the differences between classes and structures. If you open up the resources for this exercise, you'll see we have a starter playground that contains a simple structure called person struct, and it has two stored properties, first name and last name, and one computed property for the full name. Now what we're trying to do is convert this to a class just so we can see the differences. And it's actually very easy. I'm just going to copy and paste this, and we're going to name it person class instead of person struct. And all we have to do is instead of struct, we call it class instead. Stored properties work the same way, and computed properties work the same way as well. Now there is one difference. Classes will not create a default initializer for you like structures do. So we have to create one ourselves. And we definitely have to set all of our properties to initial values inside this initializer. So we'll have a first name string and a last name string. And we'll say self.firstName equals first name, and we'll say self.lastName equals last name. Now we get no compiler errors, and we've created a class. As you can see, classes work very similarly to structures, but there's one big difference. Remember that structures are value types, which means their instances are copied on assignment. However, classes are not value types, they're reference types, which means that the types are not copied on assignment. Instead, the two variables point to the same object in memory. You can think of it kind of like sharing. Let me show you what I mean. In this example, we've created a person with my name and stored it in a variable called person1. Since classes are a reference type, person1 contains a reference to the person in memory. Here's what it would look like if we created another variable called person2 and assigned it to person1. Now, both person1 and person2 point to the same object in memory. So if I were to say person1.name equals Bob, then both person1 and person2 would point to Bob Wenderlich. Let's compare what would happen if we used a structure instead. In this case, person1 and person2 would both have their own copy of the structure. So if I said person1.name is Bob, then person1 would be Bob Wenderlich and person2 would still be Ray Wenderlich. To understand why classes and structures have this difference, it's helpful to understand a little bit more about how they work under the hood. When you create a reference type like a class, the system stores the actual instance of that class in a region of memory called the heap. Instances of a value type like a struct are stored in a different region of memory called the stack. There is one exception. If a stack belongs to a class, then the struct will be stored on the heap with the rest of the class. Both the heap and the stack have essential roles in the execution of a program. The system uses the stack to manage anything in the immediate threat of execution. It's tightly controlled and managed by the CPU. For example, when a function creates a variable that is created on the stack and removed once the function returns. Since the stack is so well organized, it's very efficient and very fast. In contrast, the system uses the heap to store reference types like classes. The heap is a large pool of memory that the system can request and dynamically allocate memory from. Now the heap does not automatically destroy its data like the stack does. Instead, you have to do a little more work to make that happen. This makes allocating and removing memory from the heap a slower process than the same thing on the stack. So how do the stack and the heap relate to structures and classes? When you create an instance of a class, you're creating some storage inside the heap to store the instance of the class itself. In other words, the first name and the last name in this example. It stores the address of that memory in your named variable on the stack. In other words, the reference to that instance. Conversely, when you create an instance of a structure that's not part of a class, it's stored on the stack instead. The heap isn't involved at all. Okay, that was a lot of theory, but I just wanted to make sure you understand a little bit about how things are working under the hood. Now to put it into practice, let's go back to code. All right, so let's show what we just talked about in code. Let's create an instance of the person structure called person1. And it's going to be a person struct, first name Ray, last name Wonderluck. Then we'll create another person struct, person2, and we'll just set that equal to person1. It's using type inference here. If I command click, person2 is also a person struct. All right, now we'll say person1.firstName equals Bob. And now let's look at person1.firstName and person2.firstName. Okay, so person1's first name is Bob, but person2's first name is Ray. Why? Because structs are value types. So when we set person2 equals to person1, it's actually making a copy of person1 and storing it inside person2. Person1 and person2 are completely independent. So when we change person1 full first name to Bob, it doesn't affect person2. Now let's try that same exact thing with classes instead. We'll say person3 equals person class this time. First name 
Ray, last name Wonderluck, and we'll make a person four equal to person three. Again, if I option click on that, I see it's a person class. Now we can say person three dot first name equals Bob, person three dot first name, and person four dot first name. Now here, they are both Bob. Why is that? Well, because classes are reference types. So person three is pointing to this person class, and person four, when we set it to person three, is also pointing to that same exact person class. So when we set the first name to Bob, since person four is pointing to that same person, it also sees Bob. So again, person four, you can think of that as containing a pointer to this person class. Now I can assign person four to something else if I want. I can say person four equals person class, Vicky Wenderlich. And now it's pointing to the person Vicky Wenderlich instead of the Bob Wenderlich. Now let's say later on, I say person four equals person three. So now person four is pointing back to Bob Wenderlich. And in fact, nothing anymore is pointing to Vicky Wenderlich. The Swift compiler is smart enough to detect when nothing is pointing to an object anymore and its memory will be freed automatically, which is a really nice feature of working with Swift. All right, let me show you another difference between structures and classes. So we're gonna create a new method here called uppercase name. And it's gonna say first name equals first name dot uppercase and last name equals last name dot uppercase. Now, if I save this, I get the error you're familiar with. Mark a method is mutating to make self mutable. Which this basically says, hey, if you're making a method inside a structure that modifies that structure, you have to mark it as mutating. This is important so that you understand that when you call uppercase name, you're basically making a new copy of the structure and making sure the Swift compiler knows that too. Now I can take this same method and copy it over here to person class, and I can delete mutating. This is because instances of classes are mutable objects, whereas instances of structures are immutable values. So remember, when you change the value of a struct, instead of modifying the value, you're actually making a new value. The keyword mutating marks methods that replace the current value with a new one. Now with classes, this keyword is not used because the instance itself is mutable. Okay, all this talk of value types and reference types might have you wondering, which should you use when? While there are no hard and fast rules, I'd like to present to you three possible strategies to consider. The first strategy is to think of values versus objects. Structures are value types, which means they are considered equal if they contain the exact same values. However, objects are unique, and as such, they all have their own identities. So if you had two objects that contain the same exact values, they would not be considered equivalent. For example, earlier in this course, we created a structure for a delivery area. And that makes sense, right? Because two delivery areas with the same exact center and radius should be considered the same. However, we also created a structure for a person, and that's a little more arguable. Because if one person has the same name as another person, well, they're not necessarily the same person, are they? They each have their own unique identity. So maybe it would have been better to use classes in that case instead. The second strategy to think about is speed. Structs rely on a faster stack, while as classes rely on a slower heap. If you're creating many instances of a class in a short period of time, like for example, a tight loop, you might want to consider using structs instead of classes. If your instance, however, will have a long life cycle in memory, or if you're only creating a few instances, then you might want to lean toward classes instead. For example, you might want to use a struct to calculate the total distance of a running route using many GPS-based waypoints, like our location structure that we created earlier. Not only will you be creating many waypoints, but they'll be created and destroyed very frequently, making that a great choice for structures. Conversely, you might want to use a class to represent an object for route history, because there would only be one route history for a user, and it would exist for the life cycle of that user object. The third approach to consider is the minimalist approach. Basically, just use whatever it is that you need. If your data will never change, or you just need a simple data store, then use structures. But if you want to update your data or add methods to your data so that it can update its own state, then consider using classes. Often, it's best to just begin with a struct, and if you find out later you need the capabilities of a class, then just change it to a class. Okay, we covered a lot here, so let's sum up. Structures are value types, whereas classes are reference types. Structures are useful for representing values, while classes were useful for representing objects. Structures copy values, while classes share objects. Structures are immutable, they cannot change, whereas classes are mutable and can change. And finally, structures have fast memory allocation on the stack, whereas classes have slower memory allocation on the heap.